He is risen. He is risen indeed. So much of our faith relies on the resurrection, Jesus rising from the dead. In fact, all of Christianity hinges on Jesus rising from the dead, as he predicted he would while he walked on this earth. And many have set out, many people have set out to disprove Christianity and disprove the claims of Christ. Um, and the way that they tried to do that is to uh, disprove the resurrection. And, of course, the reason is that uh, the claims that Jesus made about himself uh, can be offensive to certain people. Right? Jesus claimed that he's God. He claimed he's the only way to God. He's the only one to forgive sin. Um, and that's pretty offensive to uh, people that don't believe. But the resurrection... Because of the resurrection, because the resurrection proves everything that Jesus said is true and will come true. So everything Jesus said about himself is true. Everything Jesus said about heaven, the realities of heaven, uh, and his future return, things that are future to us, we know, and we have confidence they will come true uh, because he rose from the dead. And so because man in, 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 in their flesh, in our flesh nature, uh, doesn't like to be told that there's a hell, that there's a judgment, um, that Jesus is the only way to God. Um, they People try to disprove Christianity and the claims of Christ by disproving the resurrection. And um, three men that I can think of off the top of my head that set out to do this actually became Christians in the process because mm -hmm. they saw the overwhelming evidence for the resurrection. And the th those three men I can think of is uh, Josh McDowell, um, uh, Lee Strobel, yes, and C.S. Lewis. And um, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the resurrection, just do like a very uh, broad sweep of it. Uh, but if you want to go deeper and, and dig deeper into way more detail, the, those books that these men have written are amazing. Um, Evidence That Demands a Verdict is the one that Josh McDowell wrote. There's volume one and volume two. Um, Lee Strobel is the case for Christ, he wrote, uh, and then Mere Christianity is the uh, book that C.S. Lewis wrote, and it just really does document their their journey in, in in finding evidence for the resurrection. In fact, I was trying to remember which one said it, because I read, the, read these books long, long time ago. I think it was Josh McDowell. I think he said, there is more historic evidence for the resurrection than there is for George Washington crossing the Delaware. Now, nobody doubts that George Washington crossed the Delaware, right? But uh, it's just good to know that I, I like looking at this kind of evidence and reading these kinds of books because it does give you more confidence in your faith that you know, when the world says that we have blind faith, no, we don't have blind faith, that our faith rests firmly on the firm foundation of historic facts and reason. Uh, so if, if you take the, if you think about the resurrection and you would like to disprove it, there are many obstacles to overcome. So one obstacle I think of is uh, the Romans and the executioners, the ones that carried out the crucifixions. They were professional executioners that their job was to make sure prisoners were dead and stay in of course with Jesus to stay dead and the crucifixion was so horrific um, you can read about it in those books no one could possibly survive and in fact many people did not even make it to the cross to the cross part because of everything that went on beforehand just made it so horrific like just the, 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 the whipping uh, people would, would be gutted their insides would fall out I mean it was just like that kind of gruesome horrible horrible torture um, the, and, and the other the other thing to remember is that those professional executioners whose job it was to kill people if they did not perform their job adequately if they did not kill the prisoner they themselves would be killed so that, and that's how brutal the Roman system was. So that was, of course, good incentive to make sure it did the job and, and took care of business. Um, also, the Romans knew that Jesus had said that he would rise from the dead. The, the Jewish officials knew, 
this was not a secret. So they placed a Roman guard outside of Jesus' tomb when he was dead, died on the cross, they put him in the tomb. They placed a Roman guard, and this was highly unusual. But again, they wanted to make sure that he was dead and he'd stay dead and there was no monkey business. Um, a Roman guard consisted of 16 to 20 highly trained professional soldiers. Um, so, so they were, of course, watching uh, Jesus' tomb. And they as well, if they fell asleep, if they were slacking, if they did not do their job, they would also, their punishment was also death. So again, there's not, you know, they're not going to goof off <laughs> or fall asleep on the job. Um, if so, again, if you're trying to disprove the body, or to, sorry, disprove the resurrection, you have to account for the body. So if Jesus did not res raise from the dead, rise from the dead, who took the body? Right? These are things you have to think about. So, you know, the one thing you might want to think is, well, maybe the Romans or the Jewish officials took the body, but that doesn't make sense because there was such an uprising in Jerusalem. They would like nothing better than to parade Jesus' body around and say, see, look, he did not rise from the dead. Mm -hmm. um, so that doesn't make sense that they would take the body. Um, then, well, the disciples took the body. That's the obvious choice. But then you have to think logically about how could a ragtag bunch of fishermen, a tax collector, uh, how could, with two swords, <laughs> I, don't know. I think at some point I read two swords, uh, how could they overpower 16 to 20 professional soldiers? You know, it just doesn't seem very logical that that could happen. But say they did, um, then if they were able to do that, then, and they took Jesus' body, well, then they would know that it was a lie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And professionals say people just won't die for a lie. Uh, only unless you're like absolutely crazy, you know, like Jim Jones crazy. But all 10 of them, you know, 10, 10 mar were martyred. 10 of them uh, died a martyr's death. Um, John was the only one that was exiled, although Jeff told me an interesting thing. He said, well, church tradition says that they tried to kill John by putting him in an, a boiling vat of oil, but it didn't work because God saved him. That was a miracle. <laughs> I know, nothing happened to him. It's crazy. Miracles, yay. Which leads into our next thing. That, 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 so it just doesn't make sense that the disciples would do that. Um, and then, of course, there were eyewitnesses to the resurrection. Um, in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, uh, 15, verse 3, he says, For what I received I passed on to you as first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. And then he appeared to James, and then to all the disciples, and last to me, also as one abnormally born. So, I mean, think about that, that list of people that Jesus appeared to. You know, there's, um, you know, of course, James, we remember from our study of James, that he was the, uh, the, the brother of Jesus. He and Jude did not believe Jesus when he walked the earth. So something had to radically happen because James became the leader of the church in Jerusalem and, of course, wrote the book of James and Jude. wrote. The, so those men did a 180. Something must have happened for them to do a 180. Paul went from crucify, you know, condemning Christians to death and persecuting the church to planting churches and being persecuted. I mean, something had to radically happen for that change to occur. Uh, John, <laughs> the, gospel, uh, the, 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 the disciple John, he went from being a son of thunder to the disciple of love. So he, the, the, these, you know, these people with changed lives, and I, I love how Paul kind of, when I read that, that passage in Corinthians, I kind of read it like Paul's like, yeah, there were 500 eyewitnesses, and if you don't believe me, go talk to them. Most of them are still alive. Like, they will tell you the same thing. So um, if that did not happen, if it was not common knowledge 
in of the people at that time, that letter to the Corinthians would have been ripped up, right? So we would not have the the, the this this uh, this testimony. Uh, so these witnesses proved to be very reliable, and um, and um, not to mention not not just biblical sources, but then there's extra biblical. There are other sources that are not biblical that talk about Jesus rising from the dead, and um, one the one person that will be quoted. Uh, that's quoted quite often uh, is uh, Josephus, who was a, a Jewish historian, you know, not really a friend to Christians, and he kind of talks about it like this common knowledge, like Jesus rose from the dead, and blah, 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 you know, like, it was just life back then. So, um, and then not to mention the fact that we have 2,000 years of changed lives. The church, miracles, and lives, millions and millions of people's lives changed. Uh, by the gospel, so that again is a lot of evidence that the the the, the that that's logically what happened that Jesus rose from the dead. So when we and again, if you want to go deeper, I just love oh, those are wonderful books to to dive into. If you would like to go deeper, so I, we think about faith, and as I was reading um, Luke twenty four, which is of course the, the resurrection of Jesus and his commissioning of the disciples. Um, I was thinking about faith, and you think that, you, there, that there is a, a, a logic side of faith. So we gain knowledge, we gain intellect. Um, it is so good to know what we believe and why we believe it, and we pray that we have opportunities to, to, to share that with people, to draw them uh, closer to God, to move them a little further in their journey with the Lord. Um, but it also does reinforce our faith and grow our faith. Uh, there's also a, a will side of faith, I think of. So there's an intellectual side, there's a will side. Sometimes we have to choose to willfully choose to believe what our intellect is telling us, what we've come to the conclusion of. Um, I think about like, so you guys know we're in a new church and um, it, it's a little more charismatic than we're used to. And I'm just so grateful that we stuck it out because at first it was really wild. I think I told you like our first our first time and they were doing the song uh, the goodness of God and and they get to the bridge where the, your goodness is running after me and then there's like a lady running around the sanctuary and we're like okay mm -hmm. <laughs> this is different. <laughs> uh, I don't really hear people speaking in tongues during the service, but um, but a lot of amens and a lot of hallelujahs and a lot of arm raising and a lot of excitement. A lot of excitement. I'm like I have never been in such an exciting church. People just so in love and just wanting to just praise the Lord and express it. Yes, and but when I go to my, the prayer time on Friday mornings, uh, there's a lot of tongue speaking, and I'm just like, I marvel. I'm like, oh, because the power and the presence, you feel the presence, and I, I don't know what they're saying, but I, I don't, and 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 it's sometimes it's unbelievable, but. I feel like I, I made a decision in the beginning, like I am going to choose to believe, I don't understand it, I, I'm going to choose to believe that the people that are speaking in tongues, like they're connecting with God, their spirit is connecting with God's spirit in a language that I can't understand, but that's okay, I don't need to understand it. They're communing with God and they're praying in the language of heaven, perfect prayers to God and I choose to believe that. Um, when Jeff and I have arguments, and if he says something very offensive, I will say to him, I will choose to not be offended. Because <laughs> I want to believe the best that he didn't mean to offend me. But, you know, sometimes there's times that we need to choose to not, you know, go with what our feeling thinks, but we need to uh, put our faith um, and sometimes it's something that we read in the Bible that we don't understand, but I'm going to choose to trust. I'm going to choose to put my faith in it and believe it. Even if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to choose in this relationship to do things God's way. And when we do, we're so blessed. We're so blessed. God always blesses us. He always honors when we make good decisions and um, we do things his way. And, um, and, and, and you'll experience his presence and you'll experience those God hugs along the way. Um, 
So, okay, so it's about time we get to Luke, right? <laughs> 24 hours I've just been traveling on. <laughs> so there's that, 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 when I think about faith, we've got the intellectual facet of faith, we've got the will facet of faith, and then there's the God facet. <laughs> and I really love how Luke draws that out, that, that, that he, he talks about at, toward the end of chapter 4, the Holy Spirit illuminated their minds to the Word of God so they can understand the Scripture. So there's got to be that, that God part. And, and I really do believe that our part, you know, the intellect and the will and the decision of our will is meant to cooperate with God's part. Like God's revealing Himself to us and His Word and what His Word means and what it means how and, and guiding us and, 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 and so, so, okay, so, uh, okay, Luke 24 <laughs> um, says, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb where Jesus was. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were there, <clears throat> wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man and be crucified and on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered uh, his words. Well, the women were told then ran back to the disciples uh, in awe and they told the disciples everything that had happened and what happened the disciples verse 11 they did not believe the women because their words seemed like nonsense but peter was quizzical he wondered he wanted to know he ran back to the tomb um, and, and and john yes and saw uh, strips of linen, saw the strips of linen. And again, when you read these books, uh, Evidence That Demands a Verdict, and they go through how the linen, like it was in one piece and, 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 and it was hard. It, you, you couldn't just like, it wasn't peeled off. It was like, it, it, it would just be impossible. Like Jesus just had to like go through it. It just, yeah. So anyway, we would just pick up those little, those little things, uh, those little uh, facts about the resurrection that give us confidence. Um, so then, uh, then, um, then we have Jesus um, meeting these two men on the road. As the two men were walking on the road to Emmaus, they're talking about Jesus and the events that happened in Jerusalem. They had heard from the women uh, that Jesus' body wasn't there, and they were just, you know, just talking, probably very excited, but scared, but what is going on? What is happening? And Jesus comes up to them and, 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 and he asks them, what are you talking about? And they like stood there like, when they, it says that they were very sad too about, about Jesus being, um, uh, being killed and not knowing where the body was. And they, and I, I, I kind of read that like, uh, uh, Jesus says, well, what things? And they're like, well, Jesus of Nazareth. It was almost like, have you been living under a rock? Where have you been? Everybody's been talking about Jesus raising from uh, this uh, events that have happened in Jerusalem. Um, but uh, Jesus, so they didn't know it was Jesus talking to them at the time, of course. So they told them, and I, I kind of look at this conversation like Jesus was drawing faith out of them. He was giving them confidence what they knew to be true. Now, some things needed to be tweaked. They said Jesus was a prophet, and we know he's God. <laughs> so they weren't 100%, but they're learning, and they're growing, and their faith is, I feel like, as Jesus is asking them questions, their faith is growing, they're strengthening, but they told them what they knew, that, that, that Jesus was given over to the priests, and they, he was crucified, and, 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 and then um, the women went to the tomb, they couldn't find his body, um, the angel said he was still alive. Um, they're not, they're, this is tough to make sense of. And then uh, Jesus said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to heart to believe all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and enter, and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. Um, so we see Jesus, you know, teaching these men from the scriptures, giving them greater faith, more intellect, greater things to put their faith in, to put their will in, um, right? But, but 
we get, um, but we get to the part where, um, oh, sorry, I'm kind of getting a little bit ahead, ahead of myself. Jesus taught them from the Word, taught them from the Old Testament. Um, Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Um, Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Jesus isn't just going to barge in. Um, we need to receive him. John 1.12 says, Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. We must receive him. We must receive faith. It's a gift. Um, when someone gives you a gift, it doesn't become yours until you receive it. Right, so we, God's not just gonna barge in on on on, on somebody's uh, and, and overpower somebody's will, you know. He he, and and so we need to receive him. We need to receive the faith, uh, to grow in our faith, to receive the promises, to act on the promises of God, to live our faith out, to receive the power that um, Jesus offers, um, and that power we're told in Ephesians, it's a resurrection power. It's the same power that God impact, uh, used to raise Jesus from the dead. That same power available, living within us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Um, so yay. <laughs> so Jesus, um, he, he, he uh, leaves the men, um, of course, has a meal with them. And then when Jesus reveals who he was, they were like, and then he disappeared. And they were like, oh, wasn't our hearts burning when we talked with him? Like, you just know, like the presence of God. There is something about being in the presence of the Lord um, that is just that is just amazing and un undescribable. I, mean, I like that burning heart. Um, so then Jesus appears to the disciples. And interesting, his first words to them, peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your mind? Look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I. Touch touch and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as I have. And look, there, he's standing there right in flesh, right in, their, right in their presence, right? They can see him. They can feel him. They see the scars, right? And still, it says, and while they still did not believe it was because of joy and amazement <laughs> so it was like they still didn't believe but that's okay um they asked him um oh and then jesus asked them do you have anything to eat so again it's kind of cool we're gonna eat in heaven woohoo not have to worry about the calories <laughs> praise the lord, praise the lord. <laughs> <laughs> and there's wine in heaven too that we'll be able to drink because jesus said remember last week i'm not gonna eat or i'm not gonna uh, drink until wine until yes 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 so um so jesus said so everything this is what i've told you uh while i was with you everything must be fulfilled that is written in the scriptures about me in the law of moses and the prophets and the psalms and then so here's god's part he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures that opening of the minds that's that's god's role in our faith like he reveals himself to us he opens our mind he teaches us through the holy spirit um what, what god's word means how it applies to our lives what is true of us from god's word how god sees us his perspective on how he views us how he views our life um and what's what's to come um and i love that image of jesus walking with the men on the road to emmaus because you know, he really does walk with us. We really can talk to him like they were talking to him. And, 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 and that's, um, God will communicate with us through the Holy Spirit, through the word, the Holy Spirit illuminating our minds. Um, and, and he will often give us a, a special word in our heart as we seek him. Um, and so again, it's like, it's like our will, our intellect, growing our faith and then the Holy Spirit illuminating our minds to the faith, like all work together for God's good to grow our faith and to grow closer to him and to experience him on a deeper level. Paul, I was thinking about Paul. Paul, after he was converted, and I couldn't, I didn't have the time. I was meant to go back and find where he said this, but we'll figure it out when we uh, study Acts where he says this. But after Paul 
was converted, but Jesus appeared to Paul. Paul put his faith in Jesus, became a Christian. He went to the disciples, and then after he left the disciples, he went to the wilderness, we we're told, for I think it was 13 or 15 years, where he poured over the scriptures. Now the scriptures to him were all the Old Testament scriptures. He poured over, and the Holy Spirit taught him about Jesus from the Old Testament, <clears throat> what it meant, uh, what, what, what Jesus' life and death and ministry was. And, and that was all in preparation for Paul, for the, the, the mission that uh, God had for Paul to be that amazing church planter that, that he was. Well, um, um, Jesus, while he was with his disciples and after he said, after he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures, he told them, um, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer, rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in, in his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power on high. So Jesus is giving them a mission. They were going to continue his ministry on earth. They were going to be his hands and feet. But they'd have to rely on the power of God at work within them. And that promise he made was the Holy Spirit coming. And could not come until Jesus ascended to be with the Father. And then the Holy Spirit would come in and clothe them with power on high. It would be that resurrection power alive in the disciples, carrying out the ministry of, of Jesus. So this is the gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit must be received, right? We need to consciously be aware that the Holy Spirit indwells us. And the Holy Spirit wants to empower us and guide us and direct us. And, and, and we need to, you know, ask the Holy Spirit to do that um, in, in a conscious way. And then believe him, trust him, and walk by faith that the Holy Spirit is filling you and, and preparing you for the works that that he has for you to walk in that day. Uh, works that he ordained before the creation of the world. How exciting is that? God's given us everything we need for life and godliness. So I'm reading this book. I don't know if this is going to help you guys. Um, I'm reading this book that it's Bible study we're doing at the church and this book study. And um, I'm not, the author, I mean, he made an, a, a, an illustration with the cell phone. And I don't know if I really completely understood it before what I took from it. <laughs> so he, he basically was saying, or what I think he was saying, is that with our phone, like we have 5Gs. Like God has provided a perfect connectivity to himself is available to us. So God's given us, I don't know, five G's or five bars. I don't know. I don't know what the terminology is. I'm not a tech person. <laughs> but this I understand. God's provided everything we need, right, perfectly, to have perfect connection with him. We break the connection. We drop the call. We, we, we hinder the reception, right, in what... And, 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 there, and it's kind of like what we talked about uh, last time or the time before a couple times ago, that, that you know, what, what we choo where we choose to, what we choose to do with our time, um, right, the busyness of life. Sometimes we get distracted. Sometimes we're distracted with good things, right? It's kind of sometimes that can take us away from God or break that connectivity or not break it totally. We cannot break it completely. Uh, but we... We get the reception. We get poor reception when we choose um, to not honor God in the way we live, um, the sin that trips us up, you know, whatever it is. If we choose fear uh, or if we choose to walk in fear or uh, worry, anxiety, the anxieties of life, um, envy, uh, you know, whatever. There, th So many things can break our connection, can trip us up. Um, or even, um, yeah, like I said, the busyness of life uh, or, um, or distractions. Sometimes we entertain ourselves. <laughs> we forget that God is there. <laughs> I do, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> yeah, I used to like start my quiet time and I'd be like, I'm on the phone. I'm like, oh, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, now I'm like, nope, this is going to have to go and get plugged in because you get, I get wrapped up in the news and the, you know, scrolling or whatever I don't know I used to do Instagram but I had to I had to get rid of that because it's too much time <laughs> I only I only went on Instagram so I could follow my kids so I know what they're doing <laughs> which I probably should do but so now no nope, phone gets hung up plugged in in a different room when I'm having my quiet time because I don't want I want to foster that connection with God I want to 
um, which we know um, God provides perfect connectivity. We are imperfect. We won't realize our perfect connectivity, connectivity until Jesus returns or we go to be with him. That's when our connection with him will be fully realized. But, you know, as we go in life, though, you know, we want to um, increase that connectivity to God and increase our um, attachment to him. Everything we need for life and godliness, he's provided us with. He is risen. He is risen indeed. It's the best news ever that Jesus rose from the dead. It's so exciting, too, because it's almost Easter. <laughs> um, his return, he's, and he's coming back. And we get to be part of him preparing the world for his return. We get to be part of the process of Jesus preparing hearts to, for his arrival. And, um, and, and, and that's why we spend time with him. That's why we're in the Word. That's why we study the Word together. That's why we go to church. That's why we have fellowship and our time together that we can encourage one another and, 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 and grow and pray and, and rely on the Holy Spirit to teach us. Uh, I have questions that I've been asking God this year. I haven't had answers, but I know he's going to answer me. Um, I have that faith that he'll answer me at the right time. Um, so we, because the Holy Spirit is, is alive within us, right? That very resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us and we get to be part of his mighty moving across the earth across the planet and maybe we will be the generation that gets to look up and see him coming through the clouds on the horse it's so exciting i i'm so excited uh it, it, i hope we are that generation but if we go to be with the lord I, 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 I think we'll be in the army coming behind him, riding on horses. So I don't know what's going to be more exciting. <laughs> um, and, the, uh, and, and so uh, to see Jesus come, uh, to see him uh, recreate heaven and earth is going to be awesome and amazing to usher in the millennia where Satan is bound. We can no longer sin. Uh, our relationships will be perfect. Uh, perfect unity with God perfect unity with each other, um, our bodies, souls, minds, spirits, we will be completely healed and whole, and, uh, and, and it's just going to be awesome. And we will have that power to provide perfect praise to God, which is what he deserves, right? And we are limited in our ability to praise him and worship him. I mean, we get times that we're caught, caught up and we're really feeling connected, but we will experience that perfect connection with God around the throne uh, at that time. And it's just, it's very, very exciting. Well, Jesus loves you. He wants to bless you. He blesses you. He blesses us every day, doesn't he? He prays for you. He affirms you. He anoints you. You are never not on his mind or in his heart, right? We can never fall away from him. He loves you. He delights to bless you. He delights to empower you with his resurrection power and fill you and guide you and direct you. You are the apple of his eye. And it is the greatest privilege in life, right, to serve and worship the risen King, the risen Lord. Amen. That concludes our study of Luke this year. And... Um, Next year, I don't know. I'm wondering if maybe we dig into Revelation. I, I'm kind of getting excited. I, I'm kind of looking at what's going on in the world, and I'm like, maybe we need to be prepared for, like, just so that we know. I mean, I really firmly believe when the events of the end of the age happen, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us what's going on every step of the way. So I'm not really worried that we're going to miss anything, you know, because you kind of look at and you'll be like, we need to be humble about the end times because... You know, the, the religious people of Jesus' day missed him. Now, we're not going to miss him because the Holy Spirit resides in us. The Holy Spirit was not alive in them. So we're not going to miss it. But it's good to be aware. It's good to know. It's good to be mindful. Jesus says to watch and pray. And so maybe it's been years since I've read through Revelation. I would love to do that with you guys. Um, so I'm thinking maybe Revelation next year. And then we go to two years in Acts. And the reason I'm extending it for two years, you know, with our study, if you've been with us for a long, do you guys have been with me for a long time? <laughs> like 
everything like twice. <laughs> but um, but we normally do um, the Book of Acts and Paul's letters, James, Peter, First, Second Peter. We normally do that in one year. But what ends up happening is we are so rushed mm -hmm. to finish that we end up doing, and you guys know from previous times we've done this, we're doing Corinthians in one, one session, Corinthians. We're flying through Ephesians. We, we don't even get to Philippians, Colossians, <laughs> First and Second Timothy. Those are great books we've never studied before. I would love to have that time with you guys. So that's why I'm kind of thinking, if we extend it for two years, so you'd have to hang on because we'll do the summer break again. If we do that, then we'll have time. We can take our time going through Ephesians. Wouldn't you just love to do like one chapter a week in Ephesians? as opposed to like the whole book in one time. <laughs> it's such a rich book. But anyway, so that's kind of the plan. So I don't know if we'll do Acts next year or if we'll do Revelation, but we'll see, we'll see where the Lord leads. So I pray everybody has a good rest of your spring. I pray I run into you. I pray you have a wonderful summer, and we'll see you in the fall. Amen. Amen.